Hey, did you know that what stops in a golf swing is just as important as what moves and goes in a golf swing? Today, we're gonna to talk about the stops and goes of the single plane swing. All right, the stops and the goes of the swing. What do I, what do I mean by stops and goes? Here's the thing about rotational motion and producing speed with this mechanism is that we, we have to turn it. We get that. It's a turn back and then a turn down. So rotational velocity of the body, important stuff. First of all, you have to be able to turn. But the second piece of the puzzle is when you turn, can you stop certain parts so other parts can accelerate? That only makes sense. If you look at any kinematic sequence chart, what you see are the lines of movement of the body. And these lines of movement are showing the acceleration of the body part. Parts, certain parts are moving faster than others. But in order to accelerate a part, for example, if I want my, if I want my arms to move fast, we have to move them against something. In other words, we've got to slow something down so these can speed up. Otherwise, if everything's moving quickly, these can't separate and move faster. Okay, so we need to make sure that the body is in position to allow the other parts to produce speed, which I call the stops and the goes of the single plane swing. Now, let me just talk today about lead shoulder position because it's something I tend to focus on because I think it's a big part of hand speed production. Because a lot of people still have speed in their swing, but it's in the wrong place. So if you're not stopping in the correct part of the body, you're gonna accelerate in the wrong parts of the motion. So let's just talk about what's happening in the stop idea of stops and goes. Let me go through this very quickly. So notice that when I make a backswing, that as I'm turning everything together, the leg is stopping me as I continue to go with the upper body, right? So this is slowing down as this is going up until this gets completely stopped. And then that goes. So this is stopping and this continues to go. Then in the downswing, I stabilize. So I move into the lead knee. Now everything's going. Then all of a sudden this is stopping so that this and this can go. See how that's stopping me? And then as this stops me and I continue to go, this side of my body is stopping me so this part of the body can go all the way to the finish. Pretty fascinating when you look at it from a sequencing standpoint. People ask me all the time, what is the timing of the golf swing? This is the timing of the swing in a nutshell. I'm doing it through proper positioning and proper stopping and going. And you blend that together and the body moves correctly and it moves efficiently with speed. So I want to focus today on just showing you what I look for in lead shoulder movement, which is fascinating. Check out this video. I do a quick analysis on my swing and I mark the lead shoulder and watch what happens. It's pretty cool. So one of the things I look for when I analyze my swing, you know, as you know, I always look for the proper address position with the alignment of the arm and the tilt of the body. So there's always things I check. But one of the things I like to analyze in the swing is the lead shoulder and what's happening to it throughout the motion. You'd be surprised at how, la how little lateral movement actually occurs in the lead shoulder throughout the whole swing motion. So I mark the shoulder, and if you see how I mark the shoulder, I just draw a line pretty much straight up and down, just in the shoulder position, make sure your camera is steady. And then when I take the club back, you know, the shoulder hasn't moved that far. If you really look at that shoulder position, you know, my body's still in a nice tilt. The shoulder position's nice, but it hasn't moved a whole lot. So you look at that shoulder. Now watch what happens coming down. This is where you see the stopping of the shoulder. So here goes the rotation of the body as you go through. Now watch what happens here. You get to impact and now look at the lead shoulder here. See where it's at, it's, on, it's where it started. You know, it's rotating. So it's, it's obviously not in the same spot, but it's rotating in space. But watch this, it stays in front of that line. See that? It never goes really behind that line. So once again, I call this kind of the wall situation where there's this wall here and you're just trying to move that shoulder into the wall back into the wall and keep it there and keep it forward. Now, the other thing you can look at is the trail shoulder because what you're seeing here in the trail shoulder is rotation because you see the, the lead shoulder, you're rotating it. It gets to a point where it's staying in the same position and here comes that trail shoulder 
and the trail arm zipping through there, producing speed. And it really f forces you to stay on this side of your body. So it really forces you, your weight to stay on the lead side of your body here. So that's really some analysis that I like to look in the swing because it shows how how to get to get the club the hands to accelerate through this part of the action right in here, that acceleration, that lead shoulder starting down here, this lead shoulder has to get to the point where it allows that the arms to accelerate. So there's some slowing down of that lead shoulder and that's what you see in proper sequencing. So in that video, you get a little bit of a taste of what I do kind of when I do some swing analysis. You know, I grab the, the iPad, which, God, I mean, it's so easy to take a video of a swing these days. If you're not out there using some iPad and looking at your swing, you're not, you're, you're behind the curve a little bit. But I mark the lead shoulder, right? And I'm looking at what's going on. It's a 3D look with a 2D camera, because it's looking straight at me, of what's going on with the shoulder. And even though it's moving in space, it's slowing down so this can do that. You're not seeing it get over rotated. You're not seeing it go up like this. You're seeing it go like this, boom. And from where it starts to where it finishes allows my body to accelerate around it. And so what's happening in that motion is you're seeing the body get stable, bang, accelerate, right? And then it gets to a point right about here where it goes like this. This is all slowing down. It goes like this. And this thing allows the hands to unleash the club at the bottom. The position of the lead shoulder getting to a point where it's slowing down so the arms and hands can accelerate. That's the way I look at a golf swing is through motion positions and how is the body working to get that working. So you'll watch it again here. I'll hit the shot here. It's the same thing. You got this thing going on the back swing, leveraging, stabilizing, and then releasing this stopping, allowing this to accelerate. And I can feel, I can feel that. I can feel, I can feel that happen, that. This is doing this. It's not going like this. It's not going like this. It's going like that. And I can feel it get to a point where this can, can release the club. And that's what I mean by the stops and the goes of the swing. And that's occurring because the way you're positioning the body to allow that to happen. Positions are very important to this. Positions mean I can now sequence the events. Hey, single plane fans and Mo Norman fans out there. I hope you enjoyed that last look at the stops and the goes of the single plane swing. Hey, look, I got tons of content that I put in this folder, over eight pages of stuff now from you about questions you have about the single plane swing. So I wanna cover all this stuff, but if you're not a subscriber, you might miss out. So don't forget, subscribe to my channel so you get some of this information because I got lots of stuff to cover in the next few months.